Hey, what's going on? We're gonna be wrapping up the Illinois series with our last experience on the boats. I wanted to de dedicate this one to kind of how 1648s work with some of our kits. We have one of the earliest, actually the first boat that Nate ever did with uh, the system he created for the hatches. So it's been since refined to really, really nice hatches that are much more precise and perfect and we fit. We actually have a 1648 kit where you could just have a set amount of hatches and then it drops right into your boat. Literally, a fraction of the time it would take you to, to fabricate that all yourself. Um, you can have something like it's a little heavier than the Gen X kit, so you know that you got to take that into account. But in terms of actual stability and momentum and working, it's actually it's a very very nice kit. It's perfect and it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more robust. So if you're wanting to put these kits inside, say a bass boat, like I know a lot of people keep hitting me up about like 17 foot trackers, 18 foot trackers, like like bigger boats with higher horsepower limits that go faster. Um, that's where I think 116 starts to get a little eh. And like even in that uh, Tracker P18, I stuck quite a bit of 1 8 inch uh, angle for the cross beams. So I used 1 16th in there, a lot of it, but not all of it. And that's specifically because of that boat. That boat goes fast. <laughs> it cooks. Compared to, compared to a smaller boat with like a, say a 25 horse or 15 horse, it's only going to go between 25 and 30 on average, or 20 and 30 on average. So these kits are, are nice, robust, precise. They have dry hatch bleed outs. They are... Essentially everything I did with Gen 5, but in a nice drop-in package for you so you don't have to worry about it. Because Gen 5 framing, the way you had to think about that and play that out, that took forever to set that together. And to do that in a DIY riveted version, it was nice for like bragging rights to reach incredible feats in terms of like an unstoppable bleed out system. And it was unstoppable. But uh, man, it was a pain. That's why I never, I kept it for Patreon specifically. I never released it to the YouTube public because of that, because of just how how insanely complicated it got. And if you were just, if you didn't think too far enough ahead, like the whole frame was kind of like, it eh, didn't come out even. A bigger reason why I switched to Gen X, because it was still very effective in terms of water diversion, even though it didn't bleed it out, it was a lot lighter. System equals, pretty much equals that. I think it's it's a pretty, it's pretty unique system. I wanna show you a few versions of them and then what he's got now. But before that, I wanna show you some of these products that we have right now currently in our store. We now have our own trays. And they're a little bit different from the status quo trays in that we have an imprinted, like a stamped area for through hole fittings. So whether it's an elbow or a straight fitting, you can have a little bit more variation in your build if you if you wanna do that. And it's specific for, for um, like hatch lids that you want to pop up, like tray hatches like we've been doing. You know, the reason I don't use the standard ones is because they don't really work with my system. But I could use this one like that. And I can have a tube running that way. That way when the hatch opens up, like the tube is not like flailing down or somewhere random. Like they got these random, they always got like the most random inconvenient little holes where they're put. But I can actually curve the tube to like do something where it flows with the hatch. And so if you're trying to make a tray hatch for a small boat, these are where it's at. And I will be dropping this in a new project. And I also have something else way better than this. Check this out. This, ladies and gentlemen, and all welded. We have riveted ones you can rivet together if you don't want, if you want to just put your own together at will. But we also sell them to you right here in a box like that welded. And these are stamped and creased. So the water drains absolutely to the middle, no matter what. And that's really big if you're in areas where there's like little restrictions and you can have zero water in your boat at all, or it gets flagged and you can't go fishing, to have that here, to be completely dry. And just for cleanliness of the live well, because if water just residually sits in your live well and doesn't drain, if your water always constantly drains and there's no residual water in there to stagnate and then create some sort of other filth in there that later on when you pour the water in it remixes and sticks it in and then the fish like gets sick and dies like we've seen that we've seen that happen where the live wells aren't like completely dry and cleaned out that's why we recommend the bt2 systems why we recommend a lot of things we even have ones with a separator so if you need we can make them as big as you want as wide as you want as long as you want or as, as short or tall as you want we can put separators in there we do have those and we like all aluminum live wells but i'll tell you what i've dealt with a lot of older boats that's part of like the deal here. And everything on the boat, with the exception of the aluminum, is generally destroyed, no matter what it is. 
HCPE, the plastic totes we've been using, those are nice. Those will last you a while, but over time, they break. Just like anything, the aluminum doesn't break. It stays good. 50, 60, 100 years later, it's still pretty much the same as it was before. We really, that's a big reason why we really steered hard toward aluminum in conjunction with this, its lightness. It's just the fact that it's, it just lasts freaking forever if it's built right. And this is a nice light wool. I cannot wait to stick this in my boat. Cannot wait. But what we do with this next boat will be pretty substantial. So stay tuned, check it out. Nate's been doing these boats for about as long as me. I think his actual boat count in terms of finished boats is higher. So along the line, you start developing your own systems and refining your own methods. And he took a different approach than me, which was he went out to start welding hatches and find a way to get around all the riveting and all the excess stuff that just really makes building one of these boats from scratch a giant pain. So this was his first running version of welded hatches with the intended goal of later making them for the general public. So anybody could have access to hatches like this, which has never been done before, because hatches like this you'll generally only see in a much bigger boat from a boat manufacturer. That means you'll have to retrofit those to a boat or just simply scrap them. But we make these specifically for tiny boats, and this is his latest version. We will see that boat here in a little bit. If you haven't already watched the video, it's up here in the iCard of the full video, making that 14-footer. It will be a while before I get to put one of these systems in a boat myself, but Ryan, who's fishing me right here at Fire and Fishing, if you look him up on YouTube and check out this iCard right here, he's actually building a boat from scratch with this lid system, and he has really good detail of how it gets installed. Once it's completed, I can't see anybody else's boat in Georgia beating Ryan's. In Nate's boat, which we already demoed this boat a few times in the Illinois series, a bigger commentary over it once we give it a second look is that he started sticking his hatch system inside tracks. At first he started bending the tracks and then he eventually got a die and had them extruded. So he's got a, a few really good friends and a lot of substantial tools I simply don't have access to and it pays off because his boat was really awesome. No flex at all. There was four people fishing on it at one point in time. And because the thickness of the frame and the hatch together are 0 0.090, you really felt nothing. Very, very strong, but still a lot lighter than 1 8 which we try to avoid unless you're just trying to make a very robust, heavy boat. This boat will actually go 26 miles an hour with just a 25 horse in the back. That's pretty fast considering there are two people in gear going on plane with batteries and everything. And then when the live wall is full, it goes a little slower, but it still gets up and goes pretty well for how big a boat it is. It's very impressive. He made his rod lockers where the hatches push straight up, kind of like Hell Vulcan does theirs. He's got his own little cooler system. It works really well and is very generous for the storage. He's got his own dry hatch boxes that are specifically made for switches and fuse block bus bar combos where they're pre-slotted, pre-drilled, so you can just drop them right in. And those are really nice. They're recessed, so you can stick a lot more things, including your phone, if you're trying to charge it off of one of the ports. A lot of thought went into this boat, as this was his major boat that he wanted to demo out and promote his own business. As he, like me, got tired of the day job, got tired of the wear and tear, and the feeling undervalued and overworked, and he set out to do his own business. So this is him, and this is us, and this is what we do. It is not an easy road, but it is something that we've never been happier in our lives to do. Aside from our Gen X system, it is really hard to make hatch systems that are like this for aluminum. But we can get them done in pretty much any size you want, make the tracks recess in, and the whole system is really low profile because the hatches sit right inside the tracks. So there's no framing it and then having to put an additional deck on it. So if you're worried about deck height or you just have a boat with really like low walls, this is a way you can get around it. And we've also tried to attack other things like glove boxes because the options for like center console boxes that are nice, there's just really not a lot of them out there. And the ones that are out there are plastic and not really impressive. So we decided to make some for small boats and for big boats, any boats that really want a nice system where you have the two coasters there and a day box for your valuables. You can get them straight like this or powder coated. They're meant to be blank unless you want them outfitted with a certain type of look but they're meant to go along with your frame so you can outfit them to whatever color you want so they can match the deck. All of our systems are meant to attack the unique issues that we have when we're trying to outfit small boats to an elite level fishing platform. That is what we're all passionate about. That is what we do. 
I don't really know what it is, whether it's an addiction or it's just something we fell into in the type of outdoor culture, but we're all in it pretty deep. Ryan, Nate, Anthony, Nick, Sham, and Jacob, and of course me, we're all in it. I haven't introduced you to everybody in the crew, but you've seen the majority of us between Georgia and now here between Illinois. Working with these guys really answered a lot of my questions because all of us really worked well together. And I wondered about that because of some of the sketchy venues I'd had with trying to work with other people that were really good at fishing with really similar interests. And they all fell flat and I wondered why for a long time. But now working with these guys, I kind of now see because we're all like on the same page. It's a culture unique to us that if you're not really part of it, you just don't get it. You don't understand. But all of us really meshed well together. And because of that, uh, we have a few surprises for you coming up. And I can't wait to share them with you.